Archaeologists believe the city of dreams is buried beneath the ruins of Machu Picchu in South America. Ask an anthropologist, and he'll tell you the city of dreams is somewhere in the Australian outback. Its precise location encoded in the low moans of the didgeridoo, waiting for someone to decipher it. Some say it's in Arkham, Massachusetts. Or hidden in the secret network of tunnels under Moscow, whose existence is denied to this day. But I'm here to tell you the truth. You want to know where the city of dreams is? Look around. Pinecrest Cemetery on the edge of town has been in business ever since the Civil War. It's a friendly, peaceful place. Hey! I see you there. Hang on, I'll be right there. Yep, here we go. The man with the golf cart, the Mario Andretti moves, and the lust for life is Jackie Clay, caretaker. One of those rare individuals who goes through whatever life throws at him with a smile and the perpetual belief that somehow everything will work out in the end. Even in the city of dreams. Well, hey there. Hello. Hi. Well, it's two o'clock, so you must be Casey Geller. Unless my watch is fast, in which case I apologize in advance for interrupting your meditations. <laughs> I'm him. Well, that takes a load off my mind. So I guess you can take a load off your feet. Hop in, I'll give you the grand tour. Thanks. Uh, you must be... Uh... Jackie Clay, head caretaker. Used to be just caretaker until they hired you. So I get a de facto promotion, for a little while at least. Next thing you know, they'll be giving me my own private parking spot. <laughs> uh, hang on, and uh, welcome to Pinecrest Cemetery. It's pretty here. Yeah, it is that. One of the oldest cemeteries in the state. We got some folks been here over a hundred years. The rows back that way are the new ones. You'll find most of the older folks in the plots nearest the front gate. I like to think of it like a tree, with people instead of rings. The further in you go, the more years you peel away, walking further and further into the past. You make it sound like a campground. Oh, do I? I don't mean to. It's better than a campground. No ants. Plenty of uncles, though. <laughs> Listen, I just want to say that I really appreciate you taking the time to show me around like this. Oh, forget it. No big deal. It's just... I thought... Uh, well, at first I figured things might be a little tense. I mean, seeing as how they hired me to replace you when you retire. Why should I be upset? One thing you learn working around here, when a man's time comes, it comes. But you don't hurry it either. One of these days I'm going to retire, but not for a good long time. Meanwhile, I'm glad for the help. Well, now, would you look at this? Bunch of trees fell off during the night. Just totally covered Mrs. Castell's tombstone. Uh, here we go. Uh, must have been that wind we had last night. Got all over your stone hair, didn't it? Well, no problem. We'll get these branches out of your hair in a jiffy, Mrs. Keste. Can't have folks not knowing who you are now, can we? Ah, there we go. Nice talking to you, Mrs. Keste. You have a nice day. Excuse me. But were you just talking to, um... Mrs. Elizabeth Caste, born July 13, 1927, died December 1, 1958. Yeah, she's a fussy one, all right. Likes everything just so. Won a beauty contest in 1946. Never got over it, if you ask me. Well, now, we better get over to... You talk to all the folks down there? Yeah. You got something against dead folks? Well, no, I... Casey, let me tell you something. 
I've been walking God's green earth for 53 years, and in all that time, I've only had one rule. It's a rule my father taught me over and over, so I would never forget it. Just one rule, because if you follow this one, you don't need the rest. This is the part where I ask you what rule, right? If you're being neighborly, yeah. Okay. So what's the rule? Not exactly bursting with enthusiasm there, are you? No, I'm... Well, the rule is this. Be polite to folks. That's it. What more do you need? You take every rule ever written in the Bible or any other book like that in the world, boil them all down to the bare bones, and that's what it all comes down to. People talk about how the good old days were so much better. Well, what made them better was that folks, most folks anyway, were polite to each other. You want the good old days back? Say hello to your neighbor when you go out to pick up the morning paper. Be polite. Be kind. Doesn't cost anything. Be nice to folks, and they'll always be there when you need them. I can see that with living folks. But these folks are... Sure, there's six feet of ground between them and us, but they're still folks. As far as I'm concerned, there's no call to be rude to somebody just because they're dead. It's just another form of prejudice, if you ask me. So, I talk to them. Makes me happy, and sometimes I like to think maybe it makes them happy, too. That makes sense, I guess. Well, of course it does. <laughs> now, come on, it's nearly time for lunch. I got a salami sandwich in the fridge, if you want half. Sounds great. Thanks. Well, I don't rightly know. Just a second, I'll ask him. Hey, Casey! Case? Yeah. Hey, Casey, you speak Spanish? No. I'm, uh, I'm doing pretty good just handling English. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Let me guess. Let's see. Yep. Thought I'd find this. Fernando Estevez, born August 9th, 1944, died September 3rd, 1999. I hear he moved here from South America just before he died. Didn't speak a word of English. He's always bothering Mrs. Castell about something or other. She doesn't know what the hell he's on about. So I thought I'd ask if you spoke Spanish. Nope. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Uh, sorry, Mrs. Castell. No luck. We'll keep trying, though. So what do you do when you got somebody in the ground who doesn't speak English? I leave more flowers. <laughs> you really got to cover, don't you? Next thing you'll be telling me they talk back to you. Well, who says they don't? Okay, okay, now cut it out. Hey, hey, whoa, come back here. Uh, yeah. You say something there, Casey. Yeah, yeah, okay, you got me. May as well reel me in the rest of the way. So what do they say to you? Well, you know, dead folk. Not much new to talk about. Sometimes they ask for more flowers, or they tell me the ground's a little dry. A lot of them talk about the family and loved ones they left behind. And some of them get real curious about what's happening up here. Got a couple of real sports fans on row three. And one fellow who still can't believe we elected Ronald Reagan president back in 1980. <laughs> Twice. Yo, I'd keep that to yourself if I were you. He's cranky enough as it is. <laughs> Get out of here. Believe what you want. Yeah, I'll do that. It's starting to get dark. Probably should head home soon. Yep. Hey, listen, I got some chili in the fridge. Got a friend who makes it up twice a year. Killer stuff. And some coffee and donuts in there somewhere, too. You want to share a bite before you head out? Uh, I will. Thanks. Great. Just one last stop to make on the way. Got to water Mrs. Sims' plot. She says it's getting dry. Won't take long. She's walking distance from the ship. Well, there you go, Mrs. Sims. Hope that makes you feel better. What's that? Oh, 
Oh, oh you mean Casey? Well, he's okay. A little wet behind the ears, but I think he'll do just fine. Huh? Well, <laughs> I'll be sure to tell him. Now, you go on back to sleep, Mrs. Sims. I'll see you in the morning. Come on, Casey. Let's get us some dinner. Okay, Jackie. You can give it up now. Give what up? You're trying to spook me. I mean, now you've had your fun. I just don't spook. And I wouldn't dream of trying to spook you. Fact is, there's nothing spooky about this place. Just plain folks. Some of us are just a little louder than others, that's all. Here, have a seat. I'll put on the coffee and dig the chili out of the fridge. Ah, oh, thanks. Who's that? Hmm? In the picture. They're on the shelf. Oh, that's my son, Jack Jr. He just got out of medical school. Two more years and he's going to be a doctor. First one in our family to finish college. He's a fine man. Good son. I used to take him on my rounds when he was just a boy. Got to know every name about as well as me. Then he'd get in this little pedal car I bought him, and I'd pull him down the street to the ice cream store. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, back when we still had an ice cream store down by Harvard Street. You wouldn't know it to look at it now, but this used to be a fine part of the city. It was clean, friendly, and folks were polite. And the manufacturing company started closing down. All the work going south to Mexico or Taiwan or China. Folks started moving out, following the work. Then the pushers and the pimps and the hookers moved in. Yeah. I saw some of them working down Miller Street when I came here. Yeah. That's where you find a lot of them. And I see others sometimes right outside the cemetery. Had to shoo a couple of them off just two nights ago. Anyway, after a while, it got so bad, the folks who stayed couldn't walk safe at night. So more good folks moved out, more bad folks moved in. Only good folks who didn't leave are, well, beneath us, right here in the ground. Sometimes I think maybe that's why I still like it here. This place hasn't changed. Here, folks are still polite. Ah, here it is. I knew I'd find it. You like sour cream in your chili? Cuts the fire a bit. A little. Yeah, thanks. So, what makes a young guy like you decide to come to work at a cemetery? I needed a job. Well, there's all kind of jobs. You could be over at McDonald's flipping burgers. Why this job? Well, I guess I was looking to work somewhere green. Somewhere peaceful. Mm. You sound like a man who's seen too much concrete at his time. You, you want cheese and crackers with this? Sure. Yeah, I guess you could say that. Came up from Atherton, down around Crescent Road. 25 miles of concrete in every direction. Oh, I know Atherton. Tough town. Uh, hand me that spoon, would you? Yeah, here you go. Thanks. Yeah, Atherton. You grow up tough there, or you don't grow up. Exactly. So you'll understand why I'm kind of iffy on this whole polite theory of yours. Where I grew up, you don't turn your back on anybody. You don't talk to anybody, and you sure as hell don't trust anybody. Anybody I ever trusted took off and left me when I needed him most. You can't ever rely on anybody else to be there when you need him. That's a hard way to live. Beats dying. Who says you're not already dead? Maybe deader than those folks out back. A man who can't trust, can't live, and you can't expect anybody to be there for you if they don't know you, if you don't talk to them. It works for me. I suppose. But still, I... Shh. What? You hear something? No. I did. Might have been the wind. No. Maybe I better check it out anyway. You want me to come with you? No. Besides, it's pitch dark out there. Until you get to know the place, you have to be careful around here at night. You could trip over a tombstone, a branch, and... Oh, probably just kids. 